is Lori. My nickname is Rini. I'd like to welcome you to Rini Bovini Creations. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you've popped by to check me out, welcome. I hope you like what you see. If you do, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the big thumbs up would be great. If you've come back to see me again, I am so glad you did. I so appreciate you coming back. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and share. For today's craft, if you watched my tutorial on the bunny garland, this was filmed that same day where I had no end of issues with between technology and my glue gun wasn't working. So I've done an awful lot of editing here. Uh, part of it, I just took the sound right out because it wasn't working right. And yeah, so bear with me, but the end result was super cute. I was so pleased with it. And um, I just love, love how it works. So, and it's another one of those pieces, completely versatile. You can change the colors, the ribbons, the embellishments, whatever you want to suit your own decor. So I hope you like what you see. Uh, again, just bear with me through this one as like I said, that was my jinx day where everything that could go wrong did go wrong, so we just went through it the best we could. So let me stop yakking at you, and let's get on to crafting. Okay guys, so for today's uh, tutorial, First thing you're going to need is a frame. I just picked this up from the thrift store. Um, it was already black, so I actually wanted the black, so I'm leaving that color. You can see there's some chips and stuff. That's okay because I'm actually going to distress it a little bit more, so I'm not going to worry about a perfect paint job. Um, of course, you can do whatever works for your decor, but I'm going to stick to the black. You're going to need some ribbon. I'm going to use the buffalo check. No, I, if you said, I can't believe the deal I got on that. You can see this came from Michael's. I got it um, in the after Christmas sale and I paid five bucks for it and there is 75 feet so that was an awesome buy I think I bought two actually so I'm gonna use the buffalo check again whatever works for your decor I'm gonna use some burlap here it goes Oops. you're gonna need some chicken wire. I just picked this up at the Dollarama for three dollars. I've been wanting to do this project actually for quite a while but I couldn't find the chicken wire that I had somewhere buried in my shed for the winter so I had to wait for the spring stuff to start coming out at the Dollarama. I can do so many different projects with these. It's so You get so much for your three dollars and it works perfectly. We're also going to need um, a staple gun. Again, we're going to need hot glue. Um, some snippers for the wire and some florals. And I'm not always 100% sure what I'm gonna do with the florals until I, until I start putting it together, but these are the ones I think I've chosen for this. So this is the cotton bunches. Um, again, these actually were on sale. I got them for half price on clearance at Walmart. Um, and the rest of these all came from the Dollarama. So, well, let's get started on what we're going to do. So like I said, the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to distress this a little bit more than it already is. So I'm just going to take some sandpaper. Watch the little pencil around. Look at that. And yes, we will need a little bit of sandpaper. I forgot to mention that and I forgot to grab it. So um, I'll get some sandpaper and we'll just give it a bit of a distress. Okay, so I actually picked this, uh, a whole package of this up at the dollar at the Dollarama as well. It came in a pack, I want to say, of eight or ten sheets of different um, roughnesses, I guess. Different grits, that's the word I'm looking for. Different grits. So this is just 150 grit. It, just use what you have around for this. It's not important what the grit is so much. You don't want it super fine, but and I'm not even going to cut it. I just tear off what I think I need. And I just start sanding in places where I want to give it a little bit of distress. Make it kind of, I like the way it sort of makes the, the pictures of the frame stand out. And I know this is so big, I'm probably not going to be in frame all the time, but I'll do my best here. And nothing fancy, just wherever you think it would be distressed. You know, the corners always seem to get banged up on things. That's where you're going to distress it. And as much or as little 
as suits your house and your decor. If you don't like that look, skip this step entirely. Um, another good option, and I did think about this, but I decided to just go this route. So you could do the crackle. You could put uh, the black down or whatever color you want. And then once that's dry, use the crackle medium and you do a crackle finish if you do it for this as well. So for where I'm going to use it and what I'm using it for, I'm just going to stick it. The black can do a little bit of the discussing. Just wherever I feel like it needs a little bit of it looking too thin. Again, I'm sorry if I'm kind of off frame here. It's kind of a big frame for my workspace. And there is no special technique whatsoever to discuss in your frame. Right, and I think that's probably good for what I'm doing. Alright, so then I'm just going to take a damp rag and just give it a quick wipe down so that you know, we don't have a lot of sawdust. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our chicken wire and we're going to attach it to the back of the frame. Now to do this, you can do it one of two ways. You can cut it first or you can staple it on and then trim it off after. Um, if you're going to trim it first, which might, just for the sake of space, might be the way I go, leave a little extra. You can always trim it off, but you want to get it as straight as possible. And sometimes that involves a little tugging to get it to sit straight. So give yourself some extra room if you do that, which is like I said, probably what I'm going to do just because I don't have a big space here for my camera. Sorry, I probably should have done this first. and then I'll come back and we'll show you the next step. Okay, so I just using my little my little snippers, my little ones I use for florals. This stuff cuts super easy. You could probably even use scissors if you didn't have the snippers. Um, as you can see, I did cut it bigger than my frame and that gives me some room to play. I will trim it down when we're done. So here's our next step. The next step we're gonna do, of course, is flip over our frame. in the middle and I'm going to start stapling right along the edge um, of the, and I'm going to staple the top and the bottom first um, and that way you're going to do your best to keep it even and straight as much as possible so I have to tell you I got this for Christmas for my husband which I was really excited about and it came with a note saying please stay out of Santa's toolbox stuff back it happens so I have my own now yay all right so putting this right along the frame have no staple already so after uh bragging about having my own staple gun turns out I didn't have the right staples so we're back to using hubbies but it'll do the trick all right so let's try this now I know I'm out of frame, but I will get into frame better once I get my first few in. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, I want to pull it fairly tight. I think I need to put a few more in down here. Sorry guys, I like I said, I know I'm out of frame, but I'll get better when we get to a better spot here. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now I can bring our better into frame for y'all. So I want it to be quite taut, but I don't want it to get too crooked. So I'm gonna put a couple in the top here now. And I'm gonna start in the center and work my way out. I hope you can see that bit. just in a bit, but I'm not going to do right at the corners because I'm going to want to pull it to the sides too. So we're not going to go too far. Oh, did I miss? I totally missed. I'm going to try that one again. Sort of an awkward position to be in camera, but I'll get her sorted. There we go. That would be one more over here. start on the sides. Again, I'm not going to do this corner, um, do the corners until I've kind of got, got it where I want it and then I'll go in and finish up the corners. But I will do the side corner. And then I'll just keep going around. Okay, so that's our frame all trimmed up. You can see, hopefully you can see pretty well in there. Um, now we're going to set this aside because now we're going to get on to the decorating part of this. Uh, and I'm going to need, this is where we're going to use our ribbons and all the rest of it. So I'm just going to set this aside while I make a ribbon and then we will come back to that. Alright, so now I'm going to use my ribbon, like I said, to make uh, a bow. And I'm going to make it fairly large because I want it to be in the corner. Now, a great tutorial on bow making, if that's a challenge for you, is go to Olivia's Romantic Home. She owns some beautiful, shabby chic country. She has beautiful crafts. I love her show. Um, and she's one of the places I learned to make bows. So we're going to just fold the bow in on itself. As big as you think you want it for whatever size frame you did. I, I don't think I mentioned this, but I did get them frame from a thrift store. Yeah, I did. Anyway, so you're going to fold it over on itself. I'm going to go, I don't know, maybe five, maybe six times. And then I'm just going to cut off wherever I put my scissors. There they are. The end. All wrapped it around itself. I'm going to pull out my tails because I want my tails on this one. Find center and using my wire, I'm going to wrap around in the center. I'm just going to pull my bows apart. Now for the burlap, I'm going to do it differently. Um, I'm going to fold it in half. Now because I can get this, I've got so much of this and you can get it everywhere. This is going to work better for me and for this bow. Still tinsel, oh my word. Okay, so this one, I'm actually going to glue the ends together. Uh, I'm going to be able to straighten that one out a bit.
just with my hot glue, just around a bead. Again, be careful, of course, with the burlap because it really seeps through and will burn your fingers. I don't think I ever get through a tutorial without burning my fingers on hot glue. All right, and I'm gonna do that to both pieces. Again, I'll just trim up that end a bit. So you got a, a loop or a circle and I just find with the burlap this works much better to get a, a nice bow than trying to to do uh, like what I did with the buffalo check or even tying it I just find burlap is not that easy to work with for that particular property so then for this bow I'm actually going to use the wire again I got a piece that's more manageable. So again, just gonna bunch it up in the center. Gonna wrap my wire. And this gives you those nice loops without it being bulky. You can adjust a bit here and there if you want. And then do the same with this one. And don't worry about the, the wire showing. It won't when we're done here. Find the middle, bunch it together. Using my wire, I'm just gonna go around. A twist tie would work for this too, come to think of it. It's essentially what this is without paper. Um, and like I said, it will be hidden, so whatever you have that will work. You could use just twine as well, would be fine. Um, I do use Olivia, her idea of the um, uh, pipe cleaners quite often, but I just had this handy, so I'm using that. Okay, so now we're gonna put our bow together. So we're gonna kind of fluff this out a bit. Got my loops hanging down, which is great. I want those. And you're gonna, whenever possible, with these kinds of bows too, use the wire edge. Um, even the burlap, you can get it in it. I find the burlap's okay, it's stiff enough. But the buffalo check and those ones are way easier to use. They do have uh, the wire in them. So then we're just gonna stack our bows. And I'm just going to sort of offset the burlap ones, if that makes sense. Now this is where we're going to hide them. So I'm going to take, oh, about, I don't know, six to eight inches maybe, maybe ten. Uh, you can always trim it, but you don't, it's easier to work with if you got too much than too little. And this is where we're going to hide all of that. So I'm just going to find the middle again of all three. I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to make it a nice sort of, you know, the square bit. Now that I call that where the knot would be. Like I said you can always trim it, but I always find it way easier to have too much than not enough. If you don't have enough, it's our pain to fix later. Trim that. And then just using our hot glue gun. Okay guys, sorry I kind of had to go off camera there. For some reason my new glue gun was not feeding the glue through so I was having all kinds of issues so I think I've got it sorted now. So, we do have the centerpiece in, um, just adjust it to the way you like it. Again, some of this is going to be hidden with florals anyway, so don't worry too much about it. Put my tails down, I'm going to fluff it, and as, I, as I'm kind of fluffing it here, I'm thinking I might want to add another loop of the buffalo check, which is super easy to do, and I will show you that because I'm thinking that's what this needs. It's just another loop or two. And I'm going to cheat when I add it. So I'm just going to make another 
Sometimes it's good when these things, because you can have an idea of how to just fix it without starting all over or being unhappy with it and just living with it. So just going to bunch it at the bottom there. Take some of that floral wire. Wrap it around to make the loop. And then I'm just hot gluing it on the back and that's all I'm going to do is I think it just needs that. I'm also going to make some longer tails. That I knew I was going to do, but I'll show you that here too. Trim off that edge. And I'm just going to hot glue it in the center there. Assuming my hot glue gun's going to work. Oh yeah, it's working together, I figured. Just gluing it right onto the back to give me that loop in the back that I was looking for. And cut! All right, now we're going to bring our frame back in. And that's where I'm going to want to attach my frame. Or my bow on the frame is up in the corner. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is dovetail the ends of the ribbon we just did. I always do it backwards I have to. I got it right first time. I always do it backwards for some reason and end up with that instead. Don't ask me why. I've been doing this forever and I have no idea why I always do that. Okay, so those little ends are dovetailed. They can hang. I don't want them to hanging down too far because I will show you what we're going to do with the frame. But I do want some to come down the sides. So I'm going to go back to my ribbon, figure out about how long I'd like it, snip it off. Again, do the dovetail. I, my favorite flowers are sunflowers. If you ever stop by my house, you'll know that real quick. It's in my kitchen. Everything is sunflowers. So I'm kind of hoping to find a way to just incorporate them just a little bit. I don't want it to be too fall-ish, if that makes sense. Let's just play for a minute.
So once we've got everything together, now it's just taking those little mini um, clothes pegs and pin it on your favorite pictures. I mean, you could use this in an office for business cards. And here's our final result. And I was quite pleased with the way it turned out. I hope you like it too. If you did, please give it a big old thumbs up and I hope to see you again.